Cincinnati was a city, is a city of immigrants. It was built by immigrants. We used to live in a camp. It was, it was called like a refugee camp. I just hope that like in here it will be better for us because in Nepal we don't got a lot of opportunity for us. So these individuals who are not only homeless, they're countryless. We didn't bring anything, just clothes, that's it. My mom was a refugee in the other Congo and then so they asked her what other country she wants to go to and then she said any country that is in peace, I think is peace, peaceful, just send me there. You know, in African Congo, life is hard. Life is not easy, people struggling and stuff like that. So we live because the war, people die every day, stuff like that. And that's why we live. We came to the United States to find a, I mean, a better place to live. It was difficult, not knowing nothing and nobody to help you. Well, my mom cried a lot. She doesn't know nothing, nobody helped her. After soon, we, we start speaking English and we got to help her. The kids adapt quickly. Um, they're amazing, that they, the, the way they come over and adapt so quickly. I, I think it's easier for our families with young children to, uh, to make the jump. I think the kids kind of lead the way. That's soccer is like, uh, in Africa, we play like almost every day. We used to play every day, like in the morning to the afternoon. The soccer being the universal language of sports, so to speak, it, uh, if, if you're knowledgeable about the game, you know where to be and where to be, uh, where to play and how to play. If you would have told me this team, like a team like this, existed with all the problems and conditions that do, I would have not believed you. They're from different countries. They're from Yom Tell you, like Congo, Senegal, Mauritania, uh, El Salvador, Panic, Nepali, uh, Ivory Coast, Eritrean. It's amazing, right? It's amazing, yeah. I think they get to play what they love. Like they love, they obviously love soccer. I mean, like if unrestricted, they're they're goofy. They're, they they laugh. They have fun. And they they love the game. Oh, it feels so awesome. I, I had to learn a lot of language and then learn about them too. So it's good. Like we we friends. For me, it's just amazing to be with other people. Like when they are from different countries, like me. So like it's great to be with them. So. I just feel, like, it just feels so good. Well, since we all love to do the same thing, it's easier to get together. Albert has the ball, he's 25. Oh, Number 24 from the GR Congo. He's also our uh, track star. He won uh, the national meet on the high jump. I learned here at high jump when I came in. I mean, I didn't even know about it. Even when I was in Africa, I didn't know about high jump stuff like that. Who are your best friends? All of them. <laughs> we speak English on the field. Does everybody speak well enough? Well, not everybody. Some of them don't understand. Them. So we help each other and translate sometimes. Number 17, Nao Baroon. He's from Eritrea, and um, he doesn't speak a, a word of English at the moment. And uh, he's been at every practice, every game since uh, the 1st of June. He's a great example of what's possible, and he's working hard, and so we've rewarded him. He's a, uh, he's, he's a starter on varsity, and he's a freshman. I gotta get up at 6. Uh, my bus comes at 6.45. And after this game, they're gonna take the bus ride back to Withrow, and then uh, from there, they take the city bus home. I, I've heard at times that they're waiting, you know, 45 minutes to an hour for a bus to come back. So they'll probably get on the city bus you know, between 9.30 and 10 o'clock tonight, and it takes anywhere from uh, an hour to two hours to get home. Uh, I think one time I got home at like 12 or 12.30. One of the things that I tell these kids is uh, you guys are going to have a, so much of an advantage over everybody else because of the skill you guys have uh, adapting to a, a new way of life. Um, and that challenge that you know, none of the American kids will ever have to face. Should I go somewhere else? Because like, we won't have to deal with half the stuff, but it's like at the same time, it's like, it would just be so much worse for the program. And like, it's, it's now it's like I'm in it to see like, the fruit come out where we eventually turn it around and we eventually you know, get our footing and become a, a good program. It's hard to remember that Rome wasn't built in the day.
when you start hearing people talk negative about you, walk away. Just walk away. Because you're going to be successful and you will determine your future. Sometimes people are critical of refugees and immigrants. I say, you need, to, you need to know a refugee. You need to know an immigrant. You need to talk to one of these individuals face to face. And, and I guarantee it'll change your view.